Tell you what, people, stick around at IGN long enough and they'll let you make videos on just about anything. With that in mind, strap in round heads because it's time for the definitive retrospective on the video game history of the greatest sport ever conceived. Cricket. Cricket? Nobody understands cricket. You gotta know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. Okay, fine, I'll do something else. Look, if I change Golden Duck to Nunchuck and Baggy Green to Mutant Teen, we're honestly most of the way there. You folks like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah? Cowabunga, turtles it is. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles began life way back in November 1983, when fledgling comic artists Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird conceived their very first weapon-wielding hero in a half-shell as a kooky cocktail of several comic book trends at the time. Their self-published series was a smash hit, and before too long the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were in one of the most popular animated series in TV history, the stars of a billion dollar toy line, and on the cusp of becoming a multimedia monster, with movies, a stage show and a mountain of merchandise to follow. Of course you can't conquer the cross-media landscape without invading video games as well. Something that supposedly happened years ago in Japan! Well, yes, Chief Stearns is very emotional about it, but that's exactly what happened, all courtesy of Japanese jukebox rental and repair company Konami. Okay, to be fair, yes, by the late 80s, Konami's origins in the jukebox business were long behind it, and the company was well known for its coin-op classics like Scramble and Frogger, and a string of iconic home console games, including Contra, Castlevania, and Metal Gear. However, Konami struck a particularly rich vein of gold in 1989 after licensing one of the hottest properties on the planet at that time, and the very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games emerged from the ooze. That was us! <laughs> Shut up! Oh, no! <laughs> Two separate TMNT games were released in 1989, one for arcades and one for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and both were huge hits. But even though they were both simply called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they were actually very different from each other. Inspired by the all-conquering animated series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Arcades is one of the biggest arcade games of its era, and a pioneer of four-player co-op. Filled with iconic villains including Bebop, Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, General Trag, Krang and naturally Shredder himself, the trailblazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Arcades was a coin-op colossus for Konami. So much so that the company couldn't even keep up with the demand for cabinets and had to outsource production. Tens of thousands of TMNT cabinets were ultimately sold worldwide, and it would reportedly go on to become Konami's highest grossing arcade game ever. If your local arcade didn't have TMNT in it, the place was a waste of electricity. Go. Play. Konami's NES TMNT game was also extremely successful, but it was an entirely different experience to the arcade game. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on NES was a single-player action platformer as opposed to a frantic four-player beat-em-up. Failing as one character would see that turtle considered as captured, and you'd need to play as another. If all four turtles get pinched, it's game over. Shifting 4 million cartridges, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was another huge hit for Konami, despite the game's notorious difficulty. Of course, if you remember the NES version being a punish, spare a thought for those who opted for one of the ports. The PC version for DOS and Amiga was beyond hard, it's considered impossible thanks to a programming error which saw a deadly gap widened too far to actually jump across. <laughs> If you don't recall this, it appears this game-breaking problem was unique to the North American version. The impossible jump was repaired for other markets. But hang on a second, you might be saying. Wasn't TMNT on NES made by Ultra Games or Palcom for those of us outside the US, rather than Konami? Well, Ultra Games and Palcom were actually regional subsidiaries of Konami that the company established in order to skirt around Nintendo's policy of only letting third-party publishers release up to five games on one of its systems each year. Nintendo abandoned this odd rule in the early 90s, but it does seem kind of perfect that one of the first TMNT games was published by a shell company. Too cliche. 
Well, it was a shell of a good hit. I like it. Step up. After this, the floodgates really opened. Konami built a version of the original arcade game for NES in 1990, which it dubbed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game and positioned as a sequel for the sake of continuity on that console, but it also got busy on several other bespoke TMNT games for a range of platforms. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan arrived on Game Boy in 1990, and in 1991, Konami published the DOS-exclusive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Manhattan Missions. Manhattan Missions was developed by Canada-based Distinctive Software, known for making the early test drive games and stunts, but also the aforementioned botched port of the original NES game. Manhattan Missions was a very different game to its previous effort though, and not only because players could actually finish this one. Playing a lot more like Jordan Mechner's original Prince of Persia than a traditional console platformer, the Turtles in Manhattan missions had both a walking mode and a combat mode when their weapons were drawn, just like the eponymous Persian Prince. While it contained a couple of elements of the kid-friendly cartoon series, Manhattan Missions was far more inspired by the considerably darker original comics and the slightly darker 1990 live-action movie, which you need to remember at that time was the highest grossing independent film ever made. The opening sequence, for instance, is a clear riff on April O'Neil's attempted mugging in the original movie's first few minutes, and so is Shredder's costume and the Turtles' origin story sticks to the beats established by the comic and movie rather than the modified origin the cartoon went with. Manhattan Missions also marked the first video game appearance of iconic TMNT character Casey Jones, who would be seen swooping in to save a fallen turtle when his health was drained. Who the heck is that? Wayne Gretzky? On steroids? Interestingly, this largely forgotten chapter of TMNT history seems destined to stay that way, as it's actually the only game from this initial early 90s era of Turtles games that is absent from this month's Cowabunga collection. Well, not quite the only game, but come on, I guess we've failed to mention Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles World Tour yet, but that was just a digital colouring book for 90s kids who couldn't be trusted with real crayons anymore. Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. Ooh. At any rate, 1991 turned out to be a busy year for the boys. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Back From The Sewers became the first follow-up for the Game Boy series, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project also arrived for the NES, first released in Japan. Despite sharing a similar name to the DOS-exclusive Manhattan Missions, The Manhattan Project was an entirely separate uh, project based largely on the animated series and playing similarly to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Do you like Triceratons? Well, there weren't any in the game, despite being front and center on the cover. Why? I don't know. You don't know? Hey man, I don't know either, so let's just move on to what's perhaps the biggest turtle cracker down at the Pepperoni and Cheese Factory in 1991. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Pizza power! Arriving in arcades in early 91, Turtles in Time wasn't exactly a huge departure from the immensely successful original cabinet, but it did improve on it noticeably, with new attacks, new abilities, and an interesting set of levels afforded to it by its time-travelling premise, which took the boys from the prehistoric era to the age of piracy and to the distant hoverboard-filled neon future of 2020. Why exactly Shredder thought the best way to prevent the Turtles from retrieving the Statue of Liberty was to send them back in time for them to be ambushed by his personal army, which he also sent back in time, is unclear. Why anybody would steal the Statue of Liberty in the first place is also pretty confusing. Why? Why? Oh, I don't know. Because I wanted to redecorate. Regarded by many as the peak of TMNT games, Turtles in Time etched its place in the history of beat-em-ups as an arcade legend, not unlike the original game. Also like the first arcade game, Turtles in Time migrated to a Nintendo console the following year as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time, where it became the first TMNT game for the Super Nintendo. 1992 also saw the Turtles debut on the Sega Genesis, or the Mega Drive as it was known outside North America, with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist. The Hyperstone Heist was technically a different game to Turtles in Time, even though the levels themselves were ultimately lengthy remixes of stages previously seen on other platforms. But hey! It worked! 
Konami then followed up with one final installment of the Game Boy series, 1993's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue in 1993, which mutated into a more Metroid-style action-adventure experience rather than a simple scrolling beat-em-up. 1993 also saw the arrival of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters on both Super Nintendo and the Genesis Mega Drive. Tournament Fighters was a fighting game, and no doubt a response to the surging popularity of the genre in the early 90s following the arrival of Capcom's revolutionary Street Fighter 2. The Super Nintendo version is generally regarded as the superior one, though Konami even put a third version of Tournament Fighters on NES in 1994, which was actually the last NES game Konami ever released. Gosh, I do hope there's more of them. Well, there actually wouldn't be. At least for a while, anyway. The golden age of TMNT games ground to a halt in the mid-90s, only five years after they'd begun arriving. The live-action movie sequels were terrible. Hey, 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 I don't kiss on the first day, lady. Raph, give it a rest, will ya? The original animated series wrapped up in 1996, and the Turtles retreated from the game's business for nearly a decade. They weren't gone forever though. In 2003, TMNT returned to the small screen for what would go on to become the first of three animated series reboots. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, fresh games reappeared alongside this new series with Konami still at the helm. Unfortunately, however, they'd lost a lot of that original magic. The simply titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arrived on PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube and PC in 2003, set loosely on the events of the first season of the 2003 animated reboot. But while it received praise for its impressively cartoon-appropriate cel-shaded graphics, it was a tedious affair, with limited combat, boring stages and co-op limited to just two players instead of four. A separate Game Boy Advance TMNT game released in the same year with the same name was better received and had more in common with TMNT's 2D roots, but it also faced criticism for its short length and lack of multiplayer support. Konami hastily followed up the 3D game with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus in 2004, which added four-player support but was still an insubstantial and repetitive slog. A mere six months later, in early 2005, it released the absolutely dismal arena fighter Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Melee, and later that same year it released Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Mutant Nightmare, which threw AI teammates into the mix but was yet another disappointment. Now. At exactly what point did we lose control here? Well, right about now, if we're talking about Konami. In January 2006, it was confirmed the Heroes in a Half Shell had a new home, Ubisoft. Sadly, the shift in scenery didn't really change the diminishing fortunes of the series. In 2007, Ubisoft released TMNT on just about every platform available at the time, with the exception of PlayStation 3 and the original Xbox. Based on the computer-animated movie that hit cinemas that same year, TMNT took some light inspiration from Ubisoft's successful Prince of Persia reboot series, but it was a shallow and simple game, and the total lack of challenge made it strictly for kids. It was also single-player only, repeating the same sin Konami committed back in 2003. To be fair, the GBA version of TMNT, a 2D beat-em-up which was an entirely different game, earned considerably more praise at the time for delivering an experience more in line with the classic Turtles games. Ubisoft released several more TMNT games in 2009, including a passable rip-off of Super Smash Bros. for Wii and PS2 called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up, and a side-scroller for DS called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Attack that had clever black and white 2D cutscenes that emulated the look of a living comic, but crappy everything else. It also released a successful but somewhat divisive remake of Turtles in Time for PS3 and Xbox 360. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time Reshelled boasted a new 3D look, but it did lack some pretty basic functionality, with no drop-in multiplayer even for couch-based co-op. Where did they come up with this stuff? After this, the Turtles swapped sewers again, scooped up by Activision. Would this be the sea change the side twirling shredder-stomping shell squad needed? No, I'm afraid not. No, we just got another salvo of second-rate action games. 
The problem was only exacerbated by the fact that Warner Brothers and developer Rocksteady had then recently redefined what gamers were able to expect from comic book adaptations with 2009's Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City in 2011. Despite their immense influence back in the arcade era, nothing the Turtles were starring in now could match the bat. Go! Move it, will ya? Oh, you let him blow right by you! In August 2013, Activision released Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows for Xbox Live Arcade and PC. It was a critical catastrophe. Just two months later, Activision released another one, the simply titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Xbox 360 and Wii, as well as a handheld edition for 3DS. The console versions of this game, which was overtly based on the Nickelodeon series at the time, were similarly savaged. Activision kept on trying though. There was a barely noticed handheld tie-in for the Michael Bay produced movie in 2014, and a few months after that there was another based on the Nickelodeon series called Danger of the Use that was just as dire as its predecessor was. Activision even had the Turtles stuffed into the Tony Hawk series as guest characters. That's a pretty prestigious list though, right? Tony Hawk guest stars? Joining the likes of Darth Maul, Wolverine and Kelly Slater? So, sorry, which one was he said? Well, it, it was, um, it, it was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Uh oh. What did you do? Did you take classes in insensitivity? Hey, I was just trying to break it to you easy. However, in 2016, it was revealed Activision had partnered with action experts Platinum Games for a brand new TMNT game called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. Maybe the developers of Bayonetta, Mad World and Vanquish could accomplish something developers had been failing to do for decades and make a good TMNT game. Uh, hmm, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nah. In a slightly surprising twist, it turned out it couldn't. And in a slightly more surprising twist, just eight months after its release, it was completely delisted from digital storefronts and swept away into licensing limbo. Mutants in Manhattan would be Activision's last TMNT game, a final footnote in yet another phase of entirely forgettable Turtles games. So what do we do now? What do you mean, what do we do now? Well, for a time, the Turtles maintained their digital presence via a series of appearances in other games, popping up in Nickelodeon Kart Races, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, Smite, and Ubisoft's Brawl Halla. Even the iconic Party Wagon recently got a cameo in Hot Wheels Unleashed. But it was their cross-universe cameo in the NetherRealm Studios DC fighting game Injustice 2 that would prove to be a particularly pleasant surprise. Not only did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fit snugly amongst Injustice 2's star-studded cast of comic book icons, their four distinct sets of fighting moves made it feel like a full quartet of characters for the price of one. NetherRealm's extremely transitory tryst with TMNT would end up being the Turtles' best video game work in decades. That is, until this year and the arrival of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, developed by Tribute Games and published by Dotemu. The secret, it seems, to making a shellacious TMNT game is to ignore anything that's happened to these New York ninjas since the mid-90s and simply build a bona fide side-scrolling beat-em-up like they did in the old days. Packed with loving references to the original animated series and oozing old-school detail in every handcrafted frame, Shredder's Revenge is not only deeply reverent to the legacy of the TMNT arcade games that inspired it, it augments that legacy. Unlike the surprising number of Turtles games in the past that have scaled back the four-player co-op, Shredder's Revenge adds support for six players, with Splinter, April and Casey Jones added to the mix. It also boasts deeper combat than ever before, but without losing its timeless button-mashing appeal. Just don't push any buttons today, okay? Mate, I'm gonna push all the buttons. Also, if you like Shredder's Revenge, there's more good news because those original Konami games that inspired it are coming back this month with the exciting Kawabunga Collection. But there you have it, over 30 years of T-U-R-T-L-E power. It hasn't always been totally tubular, but it's fair to say these lean green ninja machines certainly have their groove back in 2022. For more TMNT, check out our verdict on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, as well as our behind-the-scenes look at how the team at Tribute Games managed to modernise a coin-op classic. And for more on cricket games, you're obviously already in the right place. <laughs> it was a joke.
But seriously, if not cricket, we've got golf covered too. You want golf? We got golf. We can do golf. You know where to reach us. Just, they, they cut me off. Stick with IGN. Never call golf a dog game again. <laughs>